Hi, I'm Chris from CodeReviewVideos.com and in this video we're going to look at how easy it is to create, read, update and delete entities that are, we've got stored in our Doctrine backed database. So I've gone ahead and created um, three posts inside our Reddit posts table. These are just posts that are active on Reddit at the moment, just genuine titles that I've just copied and pasted in. You can simply add in another one as, as easy as any other um, database way of working with a database. There's nothing specific to Doctrine uh, at this stage that, that we're doing. This is just a, a, a table with some titles in it. So I've gone ahead and just added in another one and that's immediately going to be available to us as a doctrine entity so yeah just want to prove there's nothing really uh, magical or anything or complicated about how this works it's really just a, a, a different way of thinking so what we'll do is we're going to build on the git hut series that i did uh, recently for learning symphony 3 so if you're unsure on this uh, any of this then do watch that series as we explain that that sort of thing in a, in a bit more detail uh, but for the purposes of this demonstration I'm going to assume that you know the basics of twig and so we're just going to crack on at, from this point so the easiest thing really given that we have these rows in our database is to list them out and, and display them on the page and we can do that really easily we're just going to create a variable called posts which is going to store our posts on it and then we're going to do this syntax that you're going to see more and more as you work with doctrine so we do this get doctrine get repository uh, and you can only do this in a controller, by the way, and we can do this in the controller because we extend this controller. So as long as you extend this controller, then in here we do get doctrine. You can see that this is a method on the controller. And one thing that I sort of uh, I see frequently with people who are sort of new to Symphony is that they're going to try and do this get doctrine from maybe a service or something, which is, you still can get access to doctrine in your services. You just got to make sure that you inject it. But inside a controller, so long as you extend the framework bundle controller, then you get access to this get repository function. So yeah, just a little side thing there, but you may get caught out with it if you're not inside a controller and you're trying to do this same sort of uh, paradigm or whatever you want to call it anyway so we're going to do get repository and this is going to take in this funny sort of uh, bundle name colon and then the name of the entity that we're after so reddit post now just to point out this weird syntax here is assuming that your entity lives inside a folder called entity inside your app bundle so it's actually based on your namespace um, your namespace should match up to um, to, to the directory name as well. So if we go into Reddit post, you can see we're in the namespace of app bundle entity. So what this funny syntax here is saying is assume that we're, there is going to be an entity directory and inside that, or a namespace should I say, inside that is going to be a class called Reddit post. Uh, you can also do it the, the sort of the long handed way like that. Um, but yeah, that's the, the, the mean identical, but just so that you're aware of what's happening, just want to quickly explain that. Anyway, then as you can see, as soon as we use this repository, we've got access to these five methods. The four of them that are important to us in this instance are the finds. So find all, find, find by, etc. You can see at the end of the method here, it tells you what kind of uh, return value we're going to expect. So arrays or objects. And that's important because if we set up a twig template that expects an array, but we only pass it in an individual an individual object, then it's going to blow up and we don't really want that. But for the moment, we're just going to say find all and we expect to get back our four posts. I'm going to go ahead and dump the posts anyway, but I'm not going to go ahead and do anything onto the render at this stage. So we're not going to see anything. Um, and you can see that's just where I've stolen those posts from. So if we refresh that now, we should see no difference with the exception of our um, dump action at the bottom is, is showing us our posts. And you can see that we've got our, our different posts that, that we've set up. Um, yeah, so that's all pretty good. Let's pass them into the template and actually do something useful with them. So I'm just going to go with the shorthanded array syntax there um, just to quickly cover off it's exactly the same as doing that it's just uh, PHP 5.4 or something gave us access to the shorthanded array syntax um, might be later than PHP 5.4 not sure uh, anyway so posts and then I'm just going to pass in posts now it looks a little bit redundant but that's just the way the syntax is going to have to work to to make so you might think especially if you come from something like uh, Java, late, latest versions of JavaScript like ES6 or whatever um, you kind of end up with with just being able to pass in like posts like that, it, it should should work. Maybe that'll come to PHP one day. Um, but yeah, anyway, getting sidetracked there, talking about things. Uh, anyway, uh, yeah, that's I guess it's just uh, being a geek. So 
we're in our template. This is the, the index template that this is talking about, Reddit index. Um, we're inside this body. Again, if you're unsure on any of this, please watch the previous series where this is all explained in a lot more detail. And we're going to go for post in posts, which is um, just going to allow us to loop over this posts thing that we've just passed in. And then we're going to end that for loop because uh, otherwise I generally tend to forget to do that. So I was trying to make sure I do it at the same time I create the, the loop itself. And then for each post that we've got, we're just going to dump out, or well not dump out as such, we're going to write out the, the post title. So that was one of the fields that's in our, our entity, one of the properties. Um, that was title, wasn't it? Yeah, went so quickly there, I didn't even see it. So we've got post title. That should now list out these four posts for us in a in a little list method title does not exist oh well yeah we've not put any of our getters and setters on there though so yeah it's not going to be able to pull that off um, because it's not a public property we could probably get away with setting this to public um, which would probably work actually let's just give that a shot yeah so um, don't do that though but that's just because if it's a public property we can get access to it but let's just um implement the sorry generate some getters and setters let's do Let's do a getter and a setter for our title. And um, we'll just do a getter for our ID because you don't want people to be able to set the ID. I'll explain that more uh, in just one sec. But yeah, so all I'm doing there is Command N on a Mac to uh, generate getters and setters. You can also do it from from up here somewhere, uh, generation, somewhere in there, generate, there we are. Anyway, uh, a bit of a sidetrack, that's a PHP Storm thing. So the thing is that, as I say, we don't want to be able to set the ID. And the reason being is that obviously we covered this already back in the first video. We have our ID, which is auto incremented, which means that whenever we create a new record, so we've got four records in the table at the moment, the next one's going to be number five. If, if you delete number four, then the next one's still going to be number five, etc., etc. But you don't want someone to come along and say, ah, I've deleted number four. I'm going to then create a new record. I'm going to set the ID to number four because other stuff might reference number four. And now that sort of reference doesn't make sense because it doesn't reference the same object, even though you've faked the ID. Uh, so yeah, it's a slightly off topic sort of thing there, but that's why we don't want people to be able to set the ID. So generally, and this is uh, depends on the scale and the sort of the scope of your application. Generally, you have a, have a getter and a setter for all your properties, but you don't have a setter for your ID. That's the gist of it. Um, gets a little bit more advanced than that, but for the moment, let's just imagine that's how it is. Set title, get title. That should now, um, if we look inside our index, we should be good. We should be good. Refresh this. We should still be good. And that's because it's getting the property via the getter, even though we're using a protected property inside our our entity so that's uh, that's that's how that's all sort of fitting together and that's that's good we've got ourselves a that's a, a list um as i say though if we went into our posts and then we used a different method so say we wanted to find and we just want to find a single object at this point and we'll find a record with an id of one and we refresh that well now it's all sort of broken and that's because we've just passed in a um an object a single object Whereas before we, we were expecting an array or in our template, we're expecting an array. So it's not going to work because it can't loop over posts because posts is a single object. If that makes sense, hopefully it does. Um, but yeah, if not, then then please uh, leave a comment. But just to cover this sort of the other eventuality, now posts as a plural doesn't make sense. It's just going to be a post. And again, um, we just want this to be set to post, posts like that. Um, so we're just passing in our single post and then if we go into our template, we can just take that bit out, that bit out. In fact, you could just obviously delete it. I'm just commenting out, but we're only passing in a single post, but that's still going to have the properties of an array of posts. So you can see that we're just getting access to that single one, but because it's still, um, we've still passed it in with the key of uh, post, which is why it's available under post. Now, if we was to go in here and change this off to anything, that would now break because didn't break on the first attempt. <laughs> Made me question my sanity there. Um, yeah, it, it didn't um, didn't refresh properly the first. Anyway, whatever. The, the second time through when I refreshed, it did what I was anticipating it to do, which is to say that the variable post does not exist. So inside this template, uh, it's looking for something called post, um, but obviously it doesn't exist because we've just renamed it to judged. So let's just set that back to post anyway. And again, we can just change up this method at the top here to return a single post. So as you can see, some of them, as, as I said earlier, return an object. 
uh, find or find one by and find one by is quite nice as well because we could just say here so you pass in what a criteria as it says which is really just an array which gives it some criteria to work from and this isn't going to be the best example honestly because we've only got two fields one of them's the id um, which we know we've already got a method on there that allows us to find by id in a better way um, but let's just go with it for the moment so we'll say find one with id of three uh, and you could add in another one as well another um, another sort of criteria maybe in that case as i say it's going to be a bit of a tricky one because we're we don't really have anything else uh, let's see what else could we do um, it's not it's not really a great example we'll do that when we've got a bit more posts I suppose so let's just give that a refresh now we should still um, get a single object here because we're just doing find one by so let's just give this a, a refresh and you can see we've got uh, post ID 3 uh, let's just very quickly check so yeah with ID 3 uh, and again what another little thing you could do is just pass in an array here as well and you could say we want posts with id 1 and 3 and that should also still work but that's actually a bit of a nonsense isn't it because we're doing find one by uh, that's a better example if we just do find by which uh, in this instance is going to return an array so instead let's change this up to posts i'll, I'll quickly explain that again in a sec because i don't think that was as clear as as um as could be honestly but just bear with me so uh, yeah, I wanted to do to demonstrate the fact that you can return multiple things in, in your criteria. Uh, let's just see. That should be okay. We need to put in our for loop again. Now we should get two posts, IDs one and three. So let's just check that. One and three. Yeah, and the 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 thing that I, as I say, I'll just quickly clarify again. So you got find by before we were doing find one by. Yet yeah, it still worked even if we passed in two IDs. It's just gonna go. Okay on a find one by it's just going to go ahead and find the first matching one whereas on a find by it's going to go ahead and find all of them so yeah that, that's the reason hopefully um hopefully that makes a bit a bit of sense so that's list uh, and that's probably you know the most common operation you've got some database uh, with some some records in it some entities set up around that and you want to be able to list them uh, but in the next video we're going to cover off how to uh, create new entities delete them and also update them.